Hello and welcome to To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. Hello. And I have no idea what we're talking about today because this last week has been pretty much a complete nightmare. I'm in a hell. I think we've probably been cursed at this point. Everything that can go wrong has definitely gone wrong. We think we narrowed it down to Pyro commissioned some art from a gypsy and then did pay her. <laughs> And she put a curse on us. Well, what did it start off with again? We were meant to record, and then I came home from a party drunk. Got drunk, yelled obscenities, and then fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep during the podcast. Hello. What this resulted in was this cascading series of like, all right, we'll record in 12 hours or yep. 24 hours from now. Just trying to catch on the open part of each person's schedule or their sleep schedule. Apart from me, you had your lead problem as well, right? Like you were trying to actually get a lead to Oh yeah, we were finally going to record and then Nerd's microphone decided to, the lead decided to break. Actually (laughs) committed seppuku, like Japanese suicide. And then- So I've had like six hours of sleep in the last three days, it feels like. Yeah. And I've been having these really, really, really (laughs) weird, bizarre dreams. Like what? I dreamt about this cartoon otter, <laughs> and uh, his wife is like a cardboard cutout Asian woman that can speak, <laughs> and he has a friend that's this racist badger. I, I just knew the word racist was going to well, come in. Well, it's just like, a dream. Uh, it's, I mean, you it's just a dream. a dream. It's not real. It's just a dream. So Elon Musk feels like he's ruined, doesn't he? I mean, like, whatever you thought of him before, like, what do you think of him now? I find it amazing how he still has supporters because originally i was i I hate to admit it but originally when he got hold of twitter i was like okay i get to watch everything burn but now it is just like okay it's actually embarrassing how how bad it is right now the twitter poll because it's gotten so bad he's basically saying you know look should i keep working here Uh, i will do a poll and then the public will decide and then obviously they've all just said no we don't want you here it's like a pretty much overwhelming majority it's like 60 percent or something at least that want him gone and then He's tried to, like, go back on it because he's basically made it out now that you need to be a Twitter Blue subscriber to even have an opinion. So that poll means nothing. He's flipped to subs only mode. (laughs) Subs only mode. It's the worst part because the only... Most people were only paying for the blue ticker. Elon cock gobblers anyway, right? So, like, it's going to be skewed in his favor if he does another poll. It's actually, like, an old idea. It's the idea of adding postage to email to reduce spam. That's what Twitter Blue... And the verified tick really was trying to do. Everybody started making fun of it for, you know, people getting the cosmetic tick. But it's from this old theory that, like, if people have to pay a little bit, like, it'll filter out the low-cost spamming. It's like a train station and homeless people. (laughs) Isn't that just another form of shadow banning? Like, if you paid for the blue check mark, you're being promoted over those who didn't pay for it? Only if you're unwilling to pay to, you know, to be seen. Yeah, but that's my point. So you have to pay to not be shadow banned, basically. No, you're misusing the word. Like, shadow banned means you're being de-boosted without knowing. You're not appearing in things, but it seems to you that you are. I see. That's it's without your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the right terminology then? It would be like boosting your post on Facebook or you're paying for visibility. It's almost like advertising, kind of like pay to play, right? I don't know if it's a great idea, but it's been kicking around for a while. This like, what if we attached like some dust amount of cost to email? Would that solve the spam problem? And uh, no one's ever done it because no one's willing to do it. But here's the thing, like has Elon or anyone at Twitter explicitly said, if you do buy Twitter Blue, your tweets will be promoted more over those that do not purchase it. Yeah. In the app store, it says, rocket to the top of replies. That's how they put it. I haven't noticed any difference with people on Twitter, Blue. I just like how it's almost like Twitter at the minute with Elon taking over. It's like a flat fucking circle. So, because if you go on someone's uh, verified badge, it will say, usually, this is a legacy verified account. And Elon has said he's going to take away everyone's yeah, legacy verified month, account. I think. Yeah, because he says, like, everyone got it fraudulently. But then as well, (laughs) you'll notice the people that have, like, you know, the people that are basically in LA, like, near where Elon lives, they're probably knocking on his door, like, begging him for a verified check, like, as protection for the apocalypse. Yeah, 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 like, FaZe Clan. You know, FaZe Bags probably pulls up to his door, takes off his cap, bows in front of him, and he goes, yo, Mr. Mr. Musk, could you, like, give us a... Can you give us, like, verified, bro? He just flashbangs with the light shining off his bald head. Elon goes, like, oh, my God, like, your headline, I'm so sorry, 
of course. And, and then he gives them verified. But the thing is about the new verified accounts and what was everyone's profile picture before Twitter changed? It was fucking square. It's just reversing in on itself, man. It's like the fucking big bang or something we kind of like went off on a tangent about like how stupid the plan is or whether it's stupid or not but like the behavior of elon is what i think is stupid isn't it embarrassing it's like watching someone get into drama for the first time and not be like cut out for it they end up like thrashing left and right trying to find the approval again where it's like all right I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. And they're trying to find where people are going to cheer. And right now it's like he's getting booze in both directions. Yeah, I saw this fat bloke with a beard who equated it to like 9-11 or something. The quarter pounder was the name. <laughs> but then all of a sudden you've got this guy, you've got the leader now basically going, you know, like, I'm not going to succumb to the mob. We have to beat this mob. And then the next day he goes... I'll do whatever the mob says. Uh, did you see his tweet afterwards, after he realized he was losing? You know, before he backtracked and basically denied anyone that didn't have Twitter blue, he said something about, like, you know, like, uh, your choices will... It was literally like, you know, the Walking Dead video game. It's like, your choices will have consequences or something. He did the poll because of the backlash, right? Because of Twitter was trying to ban promoting any sites or media platforms on Twitter. He just over-promises things. He interacts with the public where he's like, we're working on it. That'll be next. Good idea. Whatever. He's, he has like 20 experiments that he'll be like, yep, I'm going to do that. Like the submarine and with the tie boys and stuff. Yeah, I remember Mr. Beast was like Elon's biggest like shill and god defender. And even he turned on him because, you know, the, the whole thing about like linking stuff externally, you get banned. I don't know. I still don't understand that message because it was so confusing. I think they've deleted it now because yeah. I just replied lol to it. They went back on it like literally within 20 hours. They were like, I'm oh, sorry. We're sorry. In a way, Twitter was already doing that because they were blocking like BitChute and Storyfire. And I'm just trying to think of some of the other competitors that came and went. VidMe, like they would be blocked. If you tweeted them, they would disappear. Or if you sent them in DMs, the, the DM would just vanish. You remember that? Usually promoting another platform will always get pushed down in the algorithm. I've noticed that. It's like, you know, it's it's like on Facebook. As soon as you link a video or something that isn't embedded in Facebook, Facebook will just kill it. Unless you're like spam paying promotion. Like, like every website pretty much does that anyway. But yeah, it's like- For sure. It's so stupid. That poll was such a stupid move. The only way that that would have worked out and not been a complete embarrassment, it still would have been embarrassing, but the only way that would have worked out in his favor would be if he won by a landslide, like a 90%, no, please stay on. And then he could tell everybody else, like, this was the will of the people. But he didn't get that. I'm losing confidence in him running Tesla because you're seeing now, like, that this guy's leadership is like, like the, to quote, uh, Mike Armentrout, like you're he's not the guy. You're not that guy. <laughs> you're not that guy. <laughs> he's still alive, by the way. I don't start on that theory. We gotta put this in the podcast. We need to put this to bed. You are delusional for th okay, spoilers for anyone listening that like is watching Breaking Bad. This is a season five spoiler. Uh, Mike dies. He doesn't he die. Off. There's no proof that he, he died. He does die, but you are convinced he like, gets he dissolved dissolved in the back of a truck. In a barrel. He got put in a barrel. What, they just got a random could be person a body double. stuck him in a barrel like, in between shots? No, nah, yeah, it could be someone different. You never really see oh, his face killed another, They killed yeah, another guy. Right. Yeah, he used his body. Could just be a different bold man. He dressed him in his clothes. It looks similar and it's meant to <laughs> mislead you. And that's it. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's a puddle. Even though there's literal interviews, Brother Vince literally said season five, five A was meant to conclude Mike's story. And then he goes, it's sad to see him go. Like he's dead. Leave the series. Back. Leave the series. Yeah, as a corpse, you fucking idiot. No, leave the series. Oh, yeah, as no, in, Walt's, he's not going to be acting in the series anymore. Yeah, no, Walt's alive as well. He just <laughs> he, he won't be he, on he... set anymore. Yeah, it's sad to see him go. But that doesn't mean he's a literal puddle of goo. <laughs> he is. He's goop. Ah, uh, but you know, he's magic sand. Do you see the goop? He's fucking magic do, sand. Do he's dead. Goop? Do you see the goop? <laughs> you see the barrel, don't you? With the blood in it or something? No, there's nothing in it. It's just a barrel. They put the body in there. Yeah, but it might be a different body. <laughs> What what body? What body? I'm please please tell me. Please tell me what body could they have replaced it with? Could just be another old man, another bold old man. <laughs> they just go to the retirement home. I mean, that'd be pretty easy. Fucking, uh, fucking Jesse's like, hey, Mr. White. They're out in the fucking well, swamplands or whatever. Walter White is saying, oh, well, I could have just got the list from Julia or whatever her name is. What's her Lydia. name? Lydia. 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 Could have just got the list for whatever he says. And then they have a little conversation that you don't see off camera. Right. And they say like, okay, let's stage your death. So after he says, shut 
shut the fuck up and let me die in peace and he falls over he just he's yeah. like anyway let's talk oh, yeah then he then he kind yeah. of like nudges he kind of like nudges him in the back and he's like are you, are you dead are you still alive and he's like yes walter i'm still fucking alive can you just leave me alone leave me in peace go away and it's like no i have a really good idea it's just so good it's so good because mike would never speak that quickly it would take him about yeah. five minutes just to even say you know like leave yeah, me alone. walter would just go like yeah yeah well, what, what's your idea what's your idea walter and walter would go well look let's fake your so death they're, 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 they're just fucking uncle, homer like, we'll simpson's dad from the retirement you know, home. Todd's an idiot like he's an idiot he's gonna be he's gonna be morbidly obese soon it's gonna be fine so we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna go to a retirement home we're gonna find someone that looks like you we'll shave his head i'll put you in the trunk of my car put him in the trunk of the car and then we'll take you back to you know the garage where we're cooking up the meth or 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 the, you know the stage of our operations and then we're going to show the body to todd and i'm going to say to todd like we're never going to speak about this and they never actually do and then they're going to put him in a barrel and then you can fuck off to mexico or wherever you're going to go doesn't jesse see his body no, he though, doesn't he never sees his body he never sees his body okay Ah, are you beginning to get it now? You're beginning to see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, I also, Walt's alive, Crazy Eight's alive, Hank Schrader's alive, uh, Gus Fring's alive. Heck, the Salamanca is alive, because you don't see him explode on screen. Uh, they swapped him out with an old guy in between that millisecond. Where were we? How did we get onto Mike Herman Trout? Because I said, because I said you're not the guy about Elon. This is what you get, nerd, for bringing up Breaking Bad in the presence of us three. I regret <laughs> it. I regretted it immediately. They're going to bring out a third series, right? And it'll be about Mike. Get Jonathan Banks' body and hold it up with ventriloquist strings. <laughs> Everybody was basically Mike Armand Trout when they were voting for Elon to quit. I, well, that's the thing, right? If you give power to the normals like us, we're going to vote for whatever causes the most chaos because it's funny. Did Jay just call himself normal? What? Oh, no. You also no, put Pyro no. in this sentence as well? What I meant by normal was not billionaires, not normal as in brain-wise. I'm one of you guys. I'm relatable, right? I'm down with the kids. You're going down on them, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's definitely not going in. That is, that is going in. Stop with this fucking censorship. What are you, fucking Elon Musk? I just like how he's the one, like, like the word woke actually has no meaning anymore. Like, like if you use the word woke, you, you pretty much are just complete cringe. I'm trying to not say it, but it's like, it's just such an easy shorthand where everybody knows what you mean. Yeah, because w- woke just sounds like, it, it, it's actually been so malformed. It just sounds like you're coping. But yeah, he, he goes all in. So it's not just wokeness, it's the woke mind virus. Like only he would come up with such a weird, bizarre sentence. I think it was an existing buzzword though, wasn't it? And he's just latched onto it. If you take the word woke out, which has a connotation to people who are progressive or on the left, And you just look at what the core problem is with Twitter, which is that like most people act differently on Twitter. It's like, you know how you act one way on Instagram or one way on YouTube, one way on Discord. And it's like the type of personality you have to boot up on Twitter is like combat personality. It's like, let me say the most like outrageous version of a thought, like the worst hot take ever. And that's going to do better. You know, like everybody knows this, the way that you feel when you open the app up first thing in the morning is like agitated like you're gonna see something that you're like i can't believe this is happening you know like the app is built to amplify is that, why do you keep using it <laughs> <laughs> because it's addictive like the you get addicted to conflict what's that hormone that's released where the stress hormone cortisol estrogen it's this mix of like dopamine and cortisol where it's like you're you're having a very engaging experience like if something is making you mad or anxious that's an extreme experience you get addicted to. And so here's why the feedback loops were so shitty. This is why the app was so poorly designed because they were trying to protect people from getting any dis- like any negative experience. They actually were causing negative experiences for everybody. So like if they had a downvote button, this would have solved everything because people would have been able to just like in passing, press down, the thing sinks. They didn't want anybody to see like, oh, wow, my um, most people who saw this tweet didn't like it. I don't think I'm going to use this app anymore. So instead, they they did no like obvious sign of negativity. They just did only positive. They were messing with the, um, you know, like the homeostasis of the way that a social network can work. And they ended up um, making these monsters they couldn't kill. It's like everybody acts like a monster on Twitter because that's the way that it rewards you to do it. So you feel angry. And you promote your posts to people who like you or who agree with you. You make them angry. And then the people who come up with those 
feel like they're having the best experience ever because they're just getting all of this engagement and uh, they're getting promoted for saying shitty things. So it's this feedback loop where like you get rewarded for making people angry and you are made angry in an addictive way every time you open it. I agree with all of that, but I just hate using it. How often do you use it, do you think, Oliver? Well, I check it once a day because I will read the DMs, so someone's sending me a message, and like while I'm reading the DMs, or after I've read them, I will check the timeline to see what other people have said. And within like five tweets, even less sometimes, I see something I don't like that I completely disagree with and something that's just so fucking stupid it makes me angry and then I just close the, the app. I'm not prompted to reply to this or to quote tweet it or to send out a little picture with some funny fucking meme saying like, oh, look what this idiot said. All I do is I just close the app. So, I mean, I agree with you, nerd, that most people maybe are incentivized to do that and that's the main reason why they use the app, but not for me. In fact, if anything, it's quite the opposite and it just makes me want to want to leave it yeah i wish it didn't exist like if it didn't exist i would be happy if we could just snap and it went away elon's doing a good job you know you might get your wish it's like a hydra though right like if you cut off another head there'll be two more it's it's like if you got rid of twitter all the people you don't like it, they, they would just congregate to another website you will never get rid of just shit you don't like on the internet oh that's fine it's fine as long as the app doesn't work exactly that way it's like it's that messed up way where there's no way for you to just sort of politely lightly express disapproval and move on that i have to promote something in order to uh, disapprove of it. That's a rare thing to Twitter in combination with a limitless follower account and public feed. Because the difference between Facebook and Twitter, because you know, Facebook doesn't, they removed their downvote button. Every, every website has now, right? YouTube didn't. So YouTube just removed the public count. But the fact that you can press down and then move on, like that's very important. Because like if somebody hates something on YouTube, and there's nothing they can do to basically like report it as bad, you know, like they'll share it. You'll take this video and be like, I can't believe this fucking video. Isn't this, you know, like they'll try to find consensus. They'll try to warn people. You have to give that little steam valve of a downvote button or some sort of emoji that looks like you hate it, like a frowny thing. I remember Facebook experimented with those. And the reason that Facebook didn't become Twitter is it's a private network, whereas Twitter is public. I would just like to say something really important. If anyone here listening today is using, actively using any of these websites, then you need ExpressVPN! I know most Woo! of you are probably what thinking, why transition. don't you just use incognito <laughs> mode? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you've ever visited. Unlucky. That's why, even when I'm at home, I never go online without using Express. Let's VPN. not read them all out again. It doesn't matter who your internet service <laughs> provider is. Let's try and sell ISPs some ads, in the guys. US can legally <laughs> sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. ExpressVPN also keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you to not be using it. Protect Imagine your there online was, like, activity today no sponsor, with the it's VPN old man rated number screaming one at clouds. At least this one's insider. short. He's almost done Visit already. My so exclusive it's actually... link, expressvpn.com slash TBH, and you can get an extra three months free on a one year package. That's E X P R E S S VPN.com slash TBH. Visit expressvpn.com slash TBH to learn more. We really need to like sell these you know <laughs> <laughs> pyro would be able to give 
a nice little testimony about why he wouldn't want people knowing what he's searching. I mean, everyone knows now, but yeah, I mean, in a world where they didn't. Do you guys use it as soon as you log in? I do personally use ExpressVPN. Genuinely, like, 20, jokes you aside. Do 24-7? Yeah, 24-7. Jokes aside, it's a fantastic service. You know, it's an excellent piece of software, whatever it is. Whatever um, it is. And I, I just use it to watch shows. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, he just I don't pushes know the, the funny red button. You know, software, <laughs> software, you know, I think it's software, right? It's software. Yes, it's not hardware and physical. Yeah, yeah. whatever. I don't fucking know. Anyways, it's great. I use it all the time. I can literally recommend this to anyone. I just use it to watch and shows because that just aren't hiding, available. Yeah, hiding like your identity, well, you can't having, having yourself not searches. give your information away, that's so important because there are malicious people out there and no matter what you're doing. I literally, Elon I've Musk. got my fucking 70-year-old parents using ExpressVPN. So if I could do it, there is absolutely no reason for you guys not to be using a VPN. You absolutely need to. It's as important, if not more important, than the fucking antivirus software these days. I w I'm very surprised, like, Microsoft hasn't installed free VPN services. Well, probably because they want to steal your data. It would probably have their fucking, Bill yeah, Gates probably because they want to nick your data anyway. <laughs> it's counter-effective to what they're actually trying to do, so that's probably why they haven't implemented it in bloatware yet. You need to get a, a VPN, and you're going to get a good deal if you use code TBH, so do that. Do they care if you say, oh, I just use it to watch netflix in different countries nah like that's, that's one of the like selling points really one of the selling points. Yeah. what about if you were saying you use it to torrent is because that's technically yeah illegal, i wouldn't right? say that i wouldn't i don't think okay i won't say that i won't say that i'm doing many illegal things online all the time <laughs> i'm looking at bad stuff really really bad stuff don't, don't. okay i wouldn't say that things that i would go to prison for <laughs> stuff <Stumbling> down <laughs> an express vpn has saved my ass and it will save yours. There have been so many interesting subplots with Elon in the past fucking month. Isn't there something else that happened in the past couple of days? It's been wild. Jay, didn't you say he has like unironically 10 children? With different I don't know how many kids. I know he has a lot and he's a deadbeat father. That's all I really know. I mean, you can tell, right? He named his kid fucking keyboard spam XA12 order. <laughs> He's not exactly a model father. Oliver, if you if you had a child, what would you call it? I'm gonna name my child expressvpn.com slash tbh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that that actually is easier to enunciate than the child's name. Yeah. Did you see the quarterings interactions? Was he God defending Elon or what? Was he one of the apologists? Or is he actually going against First he goes, don't quit. <laughs> just give me like 15 minutes on the phone with you. I can talk you into how you fix this website. I used to work for uh, like a marketing company. I have all this experience or whatever. Nah, Let me man. tell you why you shouldn't quit. I think his brain was just having like a cheeseburger meltdown. His fingers just dripping sweat onto the keyboard keys. So all the characters get mushed together. When, mushed I see, together. when I see a post like that and I see the way that Elon's acting and you could even add in the Kanye meltdown it's so like, we're going to look at this era the way that we look back on like 1979 or something where you see people who were obviously on cocaine that not everybody was calling out, not everybody knew enough about it to know that that's the sign, like that your nose filled with like white and you acting really agitated and your, your pupils looking a certain way. It's like, this is a person on coke. So what, in this case, it's Adderall? Yeah, we're going to look back at this era. It's going to be like the Adderall psychosis era. As much as I think that the way that Twitter was built destroys civilization, the fact that all of like our most interesting, best, talented, supposedly smartest guys have been destroyed by Twitter, there's something else going on. And you see you see like this weird manic like people who've just like lost themselves that gets <laughs> revealed in these tweets it's not just that people like have access to reach their followers without a filter dopamine seeking and the irrational sort of like oh this will be fine you know like people are just like not themselves like let's say trisha paytas has one of her fucked up meltdowns where she's making an ass out of herself and burning all of her Can bridges. Can we coin the phrase cheeseburger meltdown, by the way? So let's say you're having a cheeseburger meltdown on Twitter <laughs> and a friend of yours is like, hey, and they do an intervention. They're like, look, I care about you. You know, I love your stuff. You know, I support you. But like, you probably should like lower how much uh, amphetamines you're taking every day. And then they react like Golem, like, no. And then they tweet something like, normalize mental health. 
habits is you know like that's how i read the mental health shit yeah yeah what, what was the keemstar tweet about like if you suffer with panic attacks just have a sip of beer maybe two sips if you feel depressed have a sip that's of right. beer. What, was he please was that him like attempting irony i feel like it wasn't no i think he was being serious <laughs> it makes it so much worse real talk if you suffer from panic attacks and you're old enough to drink the best way to stop a panic attack real quick is to have a sip of beer <laughs> You only need like three sips. You should put that on like WikiHow or something, like how to stop having a panic attack. <laughs> I could tell he really thought about this tweet as well, and he's really thought it through. No spelling errors, no grammatical errors. Like it's perfect. This doesn't even read like a Keemstar tweet. Oh no, there's punctuation. He read it about seventy times. I do. I do like how he says you only need like three sips. Like he's, you know, he's like tested each amount of sip. Like, which is the perfect amount to cure the depression? And he's like, yeah, three sips. I'd like to think because of his height and his, his build, he's just such a lightweight that three sips will actually get him just smashed. What, what, what do you think happens if Keemstar's girlfriend has a panic attack? She's like, oh, Keem, can I have three sips of beer? I'm having a panic attack. And he goes, oh, sorry, you're underage. <laughs> <laughs> She's literally not old enough to have three sips. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most incorrect thing I've ever heard. Have you ever had a panic attack? We can't breathe or even think about getting up to grab a beer. Yes, and it works. Just doesn't even acknowledge. <laughs> yes, and it works. <laughs> oh, do you know what I, I kind of wanted to bring up about recently with the Elon stuff? The doxing. He made a tweet about doxing, right? Yeah. Elon banning journalists. The reason that he was banning them was because they were posting a link to real time information about where his plane is so that people could track where he was. And he had some crazy stalker that like confronted his son and the babysitter or whatever. So like he was saying, this is not safe. Like he was, he had been taking the position that that account was okay, but then he had that incident with the stalker and he realized like, this is not safe. And so he made a new rule because it was impacting him and probably was a good rule, which is don't post real time information about where somebody is and he bans that account. So he wasn't censoring journalism, he was enforcing a new doxing rule. But what I thought was really interesting about this was that there's been this disconnect for a while. Where All right. Online communities decided that doxing is an unthinkably evil thing to do. And journalists have thought that this is just one of the tools of their trade and that we get to knock on someone's door while recording it, we need to wait by their car, uh, film the whole thing that we can post their address in the body of the article if we don't like the person. They just, they got so used to that being normal that they didn't even know how much like Twitch and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter that these communities, particularly with a younger demo, had all, you know, realized that that's dangerous, that you can get somebody killed, that you could, you're gonna make it so they have to move. <laughs> Journalists and like the online community sensibilities were clashing there, it was like, I think where most people are at on these apps who are not journalists is doxing is not okay. And where most journalists are and like old people who haven't like, who wouldn't even know what you meant when you said swatting. Boomers would think that doxing is like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. So I thought it was really interesting to see those two camps that had never worked that out all of a sudden being like forced to, to come to terms on it. What do you think? Fucking hell, that was a long question. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> that was like the longest question ever. Can I ask a shorter question in return yeah, yeah. instead of answering it? Yeah, sure. Would you ever, in any opportunity, any situation, consent to you yourselves doxing someone else? Like it gets to a point where it would be morally okay and acceptable to do so in retaliation. Nah. No, because what you're doing there is you're doing like a targeted, you're setting up your followers to commit a crime. You're using them as your personal army as well. Like you're not even doing anything yourself. By leaking someone's information, you're, you're kind of expecting that your fan base are going to do something with that information, right? It's incitement. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's like, you know, oh, I posted this guy's home address, but that's all I did. Yeah, I think it's incitement. Like, all right, take the videos that we make. For a purpose and for entertainment purposes, we will be outlining how someone is like a bad character and it'll it'll make someone look like they're the shittiest, they're the biggest problem in the world in the, in the context of this video. So that can work up a viewer into a state where if the call to action is, and we need to do something about it, here's where they live, 
you're going to have viewers that are incited to go make their <laughs> make their life fucking shitty or hurt them, you know? And some people go that far. There was that YouTuber, uh, that Australian YouTuber, Friendly Geordies, whose house was just firebombed because the press posted his address in articles. I think the only good thing to come out from Elon taking over Twitter thus far it's called the Twitter files. It's the, I don't give a shit about like the political one, like who really cares, but it's the second one that I'm particularly interested in, the shadow banning aspect of it, because Twitter have always denied they do not shadow ban accounts. And now of course, Elon has exposed that they were shadow banning. That's right. Wasn't it people that basically had ties, like connections at Twitter, and they were basically like, can you ban this guy? And I think it was like predominantly left wings that were like getting right wings banned. I mean, it was both sides of the spectrum that were getting banned. With the evidence that has transpired thus far, yes, it's showing examples of like more political figures that have been shadow banned. I mean, that was but definitely I think it, to make I think Elon it, look better. But I think it extends still. far beyond that. I mean, we, we always, it, it doesn't surprise me though, because there's always been so much corruption at uh, Twitter. I mean, you, you know, even to get verified, l l like as a YouTuber, you could never get verified normally. You'd always have to know someone who knows someone. It was just connections. It, th there was no legitimate way to do it. You know, it's the same as Twitch getting like the, the sub button there. Like, it, it's like numbers and shit means fuck all. Like, you will literally have people with a million followers that have no verification tick. And then you have a food blogger with seven followers that has the connection because she knows someone in LA that works at the offices and she's verified. It, it's just, it's always been like that. It's dog shit. So it doesn't surprise me that they were asking people to get banned behind the scenes or shadow banned. And I would like to add this as a little conspiracy theory. I believe that YouTube are doing the exact same thing or have been doing the exact same thing. I tweeted out about our last episode and the video did not have like normal distribution. The analytics looked weird. The notifications looked weird. It seemed to flatline. The impressions weren't going anywhere. And... The reason that I thought that that was suspicious was because we had been demonetized. The video was yellow and we'd submitted it for review. We were appealing the demonetization. And then when I changed the title and took Bill Gates out, it instantly turned green. And, th and that wasn't a result of the appeal. That was just, it was like that video I made where like you take a word out of the title, you give or take a word, you either go yellow or green. So Bill Gates as a, an interest or as a subject is auto demonetized or in our case it was like that like saying his name one more time and with the weight of the title was enough to push it in the spectrum into demonetization so so bill gates is there's something about that name that is uh controversial in youtube's view well that's that's the really frustrating part because when you say it because you don't have any proof to back it up, it's going to sound like a conspiracy theory and it's going to sound like a coping mechanism. But no, there is evidence, at least with Twitter. And I believe that Twitter and YouTube or Google have been in cahoots over this or doing the very same thing. Obviously, Elon would have to buy YouTube in order to expose this. But I think if an Elon-like figure got involved in YouTube like that, I think it would come out that YouTube have been shadow banning certain people. There was some evidence I remember like a while back and it was like a filtration system or a tagging system where YouTube would apply certain filters onto certain YouTubers purely based on like their skin color. So that was something they were actively doing. So if you're a black YouTuber, they know you're a black YouTuber. Suddenly you've got a tag next to your, your YouTube channel on your YouTube channel that says you're a black YouTuber and that's going to play somehow into the algorithm. They're either going to promote you or demote you within it. That, that one surprised me. That hadn't been confirmed. That was, uh, that was something that was inferred as a possibility that that might have been a classifier. If they were trying to figure out what type of channel you were, that they would also have a classification on like what type of person you were like what demo you were didn't we talk about this uh, a little bit ago like, like it, it's kind of related how the the way the like button got removed because of like some youtubers complaining behind the scenes to youtube mm -hmm. yeah because i i believe that 100 percent as well i believe that there are youtubers behind the scenes that have complained to youtube about other youtubers or content and probably got them blacklisted because of that all right so do you remember that dude from vice uh carlos maza he was complaining about steven crowder and he worked up... No, it wasn't Vice. I'm sorry. What was the name of the, um, is it Vox? the company he Vox, was with? Vox, maybe? Vox, yeah. Carlos Maza from Vox. So he was demanding that Steven Crowder be banned. And YouTube did not ban Steven Crowder. Oh, he was the guy that posted his nudes on Reddit. I remember. That's right. 
He was posting his nudes on Reddit. So you know the kind of guy that's doing that. I didn't know. I didn't see that part at all. And no. He posted his nudes on like a gay subreddit or something, which is fine. But it's just the fact that you're posting nudes on Reddit. Like, come on, buddy. Their apology tour for not banning him was to speak to creators and talk about bullying. And that's where the bullying and harassment policies came from. Because like they they didn't have the policy to ban Steven Crowder. That was the that was their problem. It's like th what he's doing is not against the rules. So then they made the rules where now it would be against the rules. But when they were talking to all of these these uh, YouTubers, they were gathering stories of you know we're getting picked on or who were getting repercussions for things that they were doing. But I think YouTube took all of that in as actual bullying and harassment, where some of it. And now I know because like I was asked about a few of these people. Where it's like, oh, well, you know, you think this person deserves it? And I looked into it and it was like, yes, they do. <laughs> I'm like, look at what they're doing. So then I would look off platform at where the hate came from. And they were totally like stirring up some shit on Twitter and like making a mob angry. And then the mob would go like downvote their videos on YouTube or, or do some do some things that they hadn't earned on YouTube. Sometimes it bleeds over. But like those people would then complain and be like, you know, oh, my videos are being like targeted and harassed by because I'm speaking truth to power or because I'm getting in a fight with another creator. And sometimes it's like, look, when you fucking talk shit, you get hit. Like there, there needs to be like some cost to uh, like making a mob angry enough that they fixate on you. I don't think you should be protected when you do that. I just like how, like I'm British, right? Really? I live in England and how like, yeah, yeah. It, and like how my my input means nothing. It genuinely will just always boil down to this like circle of people in LA because they've got the fastest access to, you know, YouTube and Google and Silicon Valley in general. So if they complain, it, it's like 10 billion British people complaining about something. Well, you had a you had a British YouTuber sit down with Susan and he was basically sculpting part of the policy based off of his girlfriend was being that bullied over. Days? Yeah. Girlfriend got bullied over her- The Christmas advent calendar, that's right. Who? YouTuber called Alfie Days. I remember the makeup thing, right? It was just overpriced shit or something. Yeah, yeah, and then all the commentary channels, like, leapt on it. It was like the most boring fuck- at the time, even for its time, it was like the most boring fucking drama. The sad Christmas advent calendar. I can't remember the details, it was just so fucking dull. <laughs> then you have this- this- this bloke Alfie Days with his funny little lisp. Asking Susan Wakawuka Jacka, or whatever a fucking name is. I met him in person, uh, Alfie Days. He wasn't, he was pretty friendly to be fair, but what he told me, which sounded like a bit of a cope, and apparently, like, I, I'm only saying this because apparently he tells everyone this. This wasn't like a one to one personal story. So his views aren't too great now. I kind of fell off a little bit. He told me that he purposely chose to fell off by sabotaging his title and thumbnails. Cut. <laughs> He, he said it was like he said it was like because he doesn't want to deal with the fame anymore or something like that. And I just like, like kept, I was he I kind of if he didn't want to deal with the fame, he, I was like, no. he opens up his heart to Pyro and Pyro just laughs in his face. No, 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 no. He tells everyone this. Apparently, it's like some kind of justification for like why he fell off. Because uh, he told Will and E that as well. Because Will and E told me, did you hear what Alfie Days told you? And I was like, oh, what about the self sabotage? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I'm imagining Pyro meeting Alfie Days, like standing in a doorway and being like. Hey, guess who I am? An advent calendar and slamming a door in his face. <laughs> you know, like. I mean, I'd probably do the first part. I'd Peaking probably do the first part. Of an fair. advent calendar and just lobbing them at his head. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. When was he even popular, Alfie Days? Back in 2014, 15, it was all about like challenges, and there'd be a new one every week. So there was like the hot water bucket challenge, and like <laughs> hot water there was this bucket. one where you put. Skin yeah, I don't know what it was. Off. I don't fucking know what it was. <laughs> You mean the ASL <laughs> yeah, ice the bucket? Opposite. You literally got it completely wrong. God, I never fucking did one, did I? So, I don't know. Well, as far as people being killed off, do you think that Kanye and Elon can come back from, from where the current mob is? Like, what's their move that'll let people... Yeah, I feel like Kanye is in a different plane of existence to... You know, he can't come back. Compa comparable to what Elon's done. I mean, his fans will still let him have an out, like... Until the info, because you know how before the info wars, Kanye stuff happened, he'd still been going on a bit of a saying a lot of weird shit. But like the info wars was what basically cemented that he was too far gone. That's when they closed the fan subreddit. Oh right? yeah, that the fan subreddit closed in protest of like not wanting to support him anymore. But it was funny because so many diehard fans would see him say like you know something mildly anti-Semitic 
for the Infowars and be like, no, Kanye. And then he he, release, he releases a song and they're like, ah, oh, I'm a fan again. You know, like all it took was a, a nice beat with a Kanye verse over the top for them to go, eh, I can ignore what he's done. <laughs> a lot of people were really shocked by, you know, what just happened with Kanye. But to me, I was like, he, I'm like, have you people been listening to his stuff? Like, like Dolan, you said you're, you're a fan. You yeah. go back uh, listening to him for a while. Like, hasn't he always been like complaining about exploitation and power structure? Kind of, but not, and you know, not race. like as you know, as what he said, you can tell he's not mentally well. And then he's he would he would like do a lot of shit that's weird, and then he'd get his act together, and you think he's good, and then then what? He got divorced, and it just got worse and worse. My theory is like he started off doing this whole Jew thing for like attention. He dug himself a fat hole, and he just can't climb himself out of it. Nah. Well, the the White Lives Matter was a, what that was for attention, but then when that backfired, oh, the Trump hat stuff. Oh the no, Trump no, he wore stuff, this, or he is went this to fashion afterwards? week with Candace Owens and he wore a shirt that said White Lives Matter. And uh, then, yeah, that was yeah, the beginning. So, so then he got this backlash. <laughs> he was basically flipping it back on the press. Yeah, he, and he was like And people will he was like, act no. as if it's profound. It would always kind of be like as soon as you see Kanye in the, is in the news, you know he's got an album rollout happening. And that's what it was, but it was sometime around the Life of Pablo album. That's when he actually started kind of going down that path of no return. This is what he probably thought, like, okay, I want to create, like, some buzz. I need some attention. I need it desperately. Please, please, please give me some attention. Um, who's the most hated man in the world? Oh, right, it's this guy. It's this bloke called Adolf Hitler. If I say that I like Hitler and I think he was a really smart man, that's going to get a lot of attention. And it's going to be used as a tool to promote my next album. Here's the question. When should I do it? Mm, I'll save that for when I really need it. Okay, it's 2022. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he's deluded himself into believing his insane logic now. But I don't think at the time when he first concocted this idea that he actually believed it. He came out as saying he was bipolar a couple years ago. And then he recently rescinded that a f like a month ago because he was like, that's just what the Jewish doctors told me. I thought there was a very interesting reveal in that though, when he showed the text message from who he called his handler. It was like a personal right. trainer or a nutritionist that was talking to him like he was going to tranquilize him and institutionalize him and that he didn't want to ever hear him. Yeah, this guy named Harvey. He's like, we're going to meet tomorrow, and if you swear at me, or if you repeat some dumb shit that you read on Twitter, or that your friend told you, then I'm going to uh, put you on drugs for the rest That's of your life, fucked. and basically Damn. like chemically lobotomize you, or whatever. And he's like, and Christmases just won't be the same. I'm going to tranquilize you so much that when you're hanging out with your kids, you're, you're going to be out of it. I wonder who the hell that was. Exactly. I want him to talk about that. Like... I'd love to get him on our podcast to ask him about that, right? Do you think he like, would actually come on this podcast unironically? No. Nah. He might. He might. If Dolan reaches out and says, like, if Dolan reaches out and says the right thing, maybe. Because he, he's come on. He went and did a, a Clubhouse, like, five nights ago that had, like, 500 viewers, and he got banned off of Clubhouse after Do we just pretend we're... We're a racist podcast to get Kanye on. <laughs> Pyro, uh, Kanye used to follow you on Twitter, right? Like, why did he follow you? What happened? See, that's the thing, because I, I DM'd him and I asked him to play Fortnite and someone did an article on that, which is kind of genius. But yeah, no, like, I remember it got pointed out to me that when he followed me, he also followed, like, these weird, like, ironic meme accounts. It, it, it's so bizarre. He was following, like, Simpsons memes and stuff. I think he just clicked on a bunch of profiles and clicked follow for whatever reason. Yeah. If you remember, you got followed because you tweeted a Photoshop picture of his face, or his, his face was really small and his head was really That's big. That's right. <laughs> so, Kanye, you used to follow one of these cast members. You knew who Pyro was at one point in time. You thought he was worth keeping up with. So, we'd like to talk with you about Harvey. <laughs> uh, before we wrap up, didn't we need to promote the Patreon? Nerd, you, you had something to say about the AI art, didn't you? I'm, I'm pleading with a listener out there who's good at AI prompts to help us out with this. Now, this was supposed to be like one of the fun features of uh, one of the perks of being in our, our uh, Patreon Discord. But people are doing very low effort AI stuff. I'm trying to help out with like what I've learned about how to, how to do prompts. 
but it's like it's revealing a level of laziness that I didn't even think was possible. People are basically just typing like clown smoking and then whatever they get, even if it's shit, they just give us like, hey, we can go. Roast, roast no, I'm like, listen, guys, I'm very stuff. disappointed. I expect a little bit more like you need to look into how do you get the most out of these things? Because you're getting the absolute least. Yeah. So join the Patreon. You can get berated by nerd for not creating good enough AI <laughs> art. You can watch Hell's Kitchen, the complete series with me. That's what I do almost every night with the Patreon Discord members. We just sit there watching Hell's Kitchen. It's pretty good. You, you watch. You just sit there watching copyrighted content. Well, it's not copyrighted. <laughs> Join the Patreon. You can watch Hell's you Kitchen with me. The- um, Pyro's sometimes there as well. He's normally just playing like a video game and ignoring you. But Hello. Every time Pyro's drunk, he will join the Discord and he will stream video games to you for some reason i don't know why he does it but he always does it without fail so true 